All right, hello everybody. Uh, I'm putting together a video for my advanced tech lab class on getting started with the Spark Fun Inventors kit. Um, here's the kit uh, with all the parts online. And then I wanted to show you, uh, I'm gonna assume that we've already tried to wire a board. I wanna show you troubleshooting of the board and how to get all of the circuits on what's called the SICK guide and install it so you can work on it from home. And then I'm even gonna to go to the part of talking about how I want uh, my students turning in their files. So here we go. Okay, take a look at my lovely desk that you see here. Yeah, so I have my Spark Fun kit and I've already done some wiring. I, I'm cheating, actually a student did this. And then I broke it because I wanna show you what happens when you try to test this out, okay? So let's say we got our board, um, we, we have our book. Over here is my sick guide book. When you first get this at home or whatever, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna read all of this stuff. There's, there's words that you can use. So you see how it connects with the cable to your computer. All right, so take a look. You'll see right here, there's a URL for getting Arduino, arduino.cc slash en slash main slash software. And what's cool about the software is it's free. Um, you can get on any browser. You can run the thing on uh, Windows, Mac, Linux. Um, you can run the thing on a Raspberry Pi if you want. Um, all kinds of stuff because Raspberry Pi uses Linux. Anyway, so let's just show you the Arduino software. I'll hide that for a moment. Uh, Arduino, here it is. You can run it off a USB drive if you want. Okay, see that? Arduino. And if anyone wants to tell me what Arduino means in Italian, let me know. Uh, when you open it up, the first thing you see is void setup, void loop. Okay. And from a programming point of view, guys, for those of you that are interested, this is called processing, I believe. They call it sketches. And it's a C-based programming language. And um, setup just means before you run the program, what do you got to do? You got to set up, right? Um, and you're going to like have a presentation. You got to set it up first, and then you run it. So you do a setup, and then you do a loop. Sometimes you will do things even before setup. But let's not worry about that right now. Let's talk about the next step, which is um, you could just code in here. You can find sample codes online, but I want to show you uh, one other item you got to see. Okay, here's my book now, right? And let's go over another page because one of the things you want to see here, go a couple pages, and you want to see this URL, sparkfun.com slash sick code. All right, one of the things you're going to notice is it's, you're going to get what's called a zip file, which means all of these programs are condensed and you're gonna to have to unzip them. And if you're not familiar with zip, I gotta show you this because you'll be confused if you try to work with it, not unzipping it. So let's go there and let's download it and I'll show you what that's like. All right, when you are ready to try out your Arduino program, uh, what you wanna do is you wanna get the sick code and it's at sparkfun.com slash sick code. You wanna type that in, you hit enter and it's gonna download a zip file. And I've already downloaded it once just to test it out. So let me just show you in the folder. It is a zip file, which means it is compressed and what they call an archive file. And so what we're gonna wanna do is extract these files, but we're gonna wanna put them where we have our Arduino examples. So you right click, you choose extract all. Now you're gonna need administrator privilege to do this. And instead of downloading it here, which you could do, but then you'd have to copy and paste it, I recommend you just click browse and you find where Arduino is installed. It should be, in, if you're a Windows anyway, it's gonna be the C drive and it's gonna be program files x86. You will see Arduino in there, there it is. And then you will see examples and you're just gonna click okay and click extract. And then see, you need administrator permission. Okay, when it's done, it drops it all in here in examples. And sorry, I don't have a Mac to show you how I do it on Mac, but there it is on Windows. And now you're ready to, let's say we're going to do the very first one, um, which is in the sick guide circuit one, and there are 16 in all. So to get that open, you can actually just go into this folder and open it this way. Or you can open up Arduino. 
if you have it installed, not to a flash drive. It's on a flash drive. You just find it and double click it. But you want to click on here and you can, let's just full screen this, and you can just do file and you can do examples and you scroll down there to see sick guide code 32, circuit one, blinking LED, bam, there we go. You're going to see this. All this that's kind of gray is uh, what's called a comment. It's a multi-light comment. It begins with the slash star. And you read all this text. This is for you to read. It tells you all the stuff you need to know. Okay. Then we have a welcome. This is a single line comments slash slash. Also, what happens is this gets ignored by Arduino, but you can read it. So they put all this stuff in. And it has definitions like sketches and comments and function and setup and loop. Okay. And then it tells you what's going on in setup. And suddenly we have our code. Now, in the code, in setup, you usually, if you're going to have an LED light and you're going to power it, you're going to need to power it with one of your digital pins. In this case, they chose to do digital pin 13. Okay, so pin mode means, all right, what pin are we using? We're going to use pin 13. And then there's a comma because we want to tell it how are we using it. We're going to output power from that pin mode from pin 13. It's going to be output as opposed to input. Okay, and so if you want more information, you Google it, whatever. All right, but that tells us it's pin mode 13. And one of the requirements you need to know, and this is going to be very important, is that means you want to make sure that that pin 13, you see that? Your wire is connected to pin 13. Okay. All right. So I have it that way. If I, if I change the pin mode here, I have to change it on the board. I could change it to 12. If I change it to 12, then I would just need to make sure I move it from 13 to 12. Okay, and you want to be able to look straight down so you know if you're changing it the right way. Okay, so right there you can kind of tell. I'm actually going to do that just because I want to try it out. Okay, all right. Uh, I should probably put it back since a lot of you are following along from your books. Okay, we go back here. But just understand you can change that around. All right, we won't talk about any more as to why we're doing 13 and not something else. It probably says it here. Okay, now... Next part of your program is loop. You can read the comments to see, but I will just tell you, digital write is how we basically send um, or stop sending our power. So digital write. Now notice, little d for digital, capital W for write. If you get that wrong, it won't work. Notice a parenthesis. There's a closing parenthesis here and a semicolon. In it, we have two pieces of information separated by a comma. We call those arguments. The first argument is 13. That stands for the pin. Next one is high. That means send out power. Okay, turn on the LED. Your comment tells you that if you didn't realize. Delay tells us to wait in milliseconds. In the parentheses, we give a thousand milliseconds, which is one second. We want to change it to a second and a half. We change it to 1500. Don't insert commas. That will break it. Then we do digital write low, which means turn off the LED. We do delay, which is a thousand, which means wait. And then we have more comments, and there's that little curly bracket again. And we scroll up. That's part of loop. Loop starts here, ends here. But because it's a loop, a loop means it repeats over and over and over again. This is an infinite loop. As long as your board is powered, it's going to be doing this program. But you may be asking, how do we upload the program? That's our next step. Okay, so let's get back to the camera. Let's take a look at my board. With your Arduino kit is this old USB connector. USB connector right there. Hey, let me give you a really great tip. If you want to power this board and show it to someone else and you don't want to be connected to your computer, get one of those USB chargers. Charge it up. Then you can take the board with you. You don't have to be connected to a computer anymore and you can show off your wonderful engineering skills.
All right, plug it in. Now, first thing is when I plug it in, I give power. And one thing you should note that whatever program we had on the board is running right now. So that program, it's running a program. But is it running the right program? So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to try to verify our program and try to upload it. We do that in here. So first step, when you plug in your board, you've got to go to Tools and Port. You have to select the port. If you don't do this, it won't communicate. It should say a com and a number higher than one or two. If it's one or two, you have a problem. And the best way to do that is to get another USB device, preferably another Arduino, plug it in to another USB port. Usually it wakes it up and it recognizes it at that point. All right, but not everyone has two Arduino boards, so I don't know. All right, I choose COM4. Now, is my program correct or not? I'm going to verify by clicking the check. I click it. Let me just close it. See how it's starting to go? That green bar is going over here. When it's done verifying, it will, the green will go all the way here and we'll get a message down below. All right, if you don't see any kind of like red messages, you're good. And you can read it. And if you want to learn about it, go ahead and read that. I won't go into that. I don't have time. Now I'm ready to upload. I click upload. Um, and you should see what happens to the board when you're uploading. You see that those two lights are just blinking for a moment ago? That means it moved it. However, I have a problem. That LED is supposed to be lighted. So what happens if you go to program it and it doesn't light? Your first question is, did you actually upload the right program? So I verified it, but if you're not sure, go back to the Arduino, click verify again, make sure it verifies. That means there's no errors in the code. Click upload. Look at that. Here goes the flashing. You see those flashing lights? Okay. That flashing lights told us we've connected to the board. So I can tell you right now, my problem is not a software problem. Engineers might like to argue with me, electrical engineers, because they always, electro, electrical engineers and software engineers always argue that it's the other person's fault. It's a hardware fault. No, it's a software fault. Well, in our case, uh, it's probably hardware. So what are we going to do? Step one, make sure your digital pin is correct. Double check the pin. Double check on your board. Okay, that is correct. That's 13. Step two, let's follow the wiring. And for that, what we're going to need is we're going to need to look at our book. So we need to get the book out. Here's the book. We're going to need to go in here. And in each circuit, when you get there, yeah, you're going to see a wiring diagram. This is called a fritzing, I believe it's called. There's actually a program online that's free that you can use to actually demonstrate the wiring. In fact, you're going to learn how to do that in another tutorial. Okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the, you're going to look at the wiring here. Notice the green line starts at 13. Where does that green line go? It goes, in this case, to line number two on the board. You see that? Now you see this plus and the minus right here? Plus is the longer of the wires. Minus is the shorter of the wires. And let's just talk about that real quick. And we went from line two to line three. So let's compare on our board. First of all, digital pin 13, follow the wire, there it is. Now, a couple things we want to look at is, is that wire on two? Yes. And you see one wire is going into two. So I'm going to pull this out, double check which one is the longer of the two. So we want to make sure the longer of the two is going into two. And the shorter of the two is going into three. Okay. There, it's in. Still not lighting. So let's look at the next item on our board. So we have to go back to the wiring, the fritzing diagram. And the first thing we're going to see is the shorter of the two is on line three on what looks like C. And this resistor is on A3. So notice the negative of the LED has to be on the same row as the resistor. 
And then we'll see the resistor jumps across this section here to the, the column that has the minus side. So let's check that. We get our board out, okay? And we look at the resistor, and we want to look really close. And there's my problem. Do you see it? Three and four. The resistor's on line four. So here's what I have to do. I can move either the LED or I can move the resistor. Make sure you try not to touch the wires. We plug it in and check it out. There it is. It's working. Okay. That was the issue. Right? So that's how we troubleshoot. The other thing we want to do, of course, is compare the board and take a look to make sure these wires are lined up just right. And they are, and you can see it's working. That's how I troubleshoot. You want to change the code, then you just go into here, and you can change this code. Okay? You can change the amount of delay. You can um, have it turn on and off multiple times. You could even do Morse code. Right? You can find all kinds of ways to program this. Let me show you a stripped down version of the code without all the comments, and I'll leave you with that. Yeah, here's the stripped down version of the code. This is the absolute minimum uh, number of commands that you can do to get this to work. I've just taken out all of the comments. Okay. Um, although I'm going to put one line return there so it doesn't do that weird blocky thing. So you have a void setup, void loop. Setup is for setting up things such as which pin are you using? You can create variables here and other things. And then loop is what is actually run in real time on the board. And this thing is happening thousands of times a second. I don't know how many times a second, actually, honestly. But it's just looping over and over and over again. So there you have it. I hope this helps on your Arduino. And good luck with your future circuit.